Good afternoon, friends. This is Sergey Kromchenko from Los Angeles, California, the founder of Konemify Online Bootcamp. With the eight years plus of experience, I've started as the QA engineer, ended up working as the senior engineering manager of SDAT. Anyways, today I'm going to share my experience about passing an interview, and specifically seven questions that some of our students did get through an email. You can get those questions through an email. You can get those questions during a phone conversation, Either way, you will have them once in a while. So I want you to know answers to all of those seven questions. And I'm going to mention each of them right now. So the first one is, why are you leaving the current company? Second why? Second one, why, are you, why did you choose our company specifically? Third one, describe a perfect role uh, in the future. Just imagine the best role you want to you wanna be in and tell us what it is. Uh, fourth one, uh, tell us about reporting. Who did you report to? What was their name in every company on your resume? Uh, fifth one, uh, your personal responsibilities in each company you work for throughout your resume, throughout your career. And then we have two more, uh, salary expectations and any current offers you are having at the moment or waiting for at the moment. You're gonna love it, you're gonna learn a lot. Don't forget to give me a big fat, fat thumb up, subscribe to our channel below, let's make it happen. So first one, why are you leaving your current company? That's a real good question, it's an okay question to get asked, it's an okay question to answer to. Uh, before we get to it, uh, let's think about how many years have you been working for your last company, because your response will, that will directly correlate to that information. Because if you've been working for a company more than two years, it's okay to say one thing. If you work, for, if you work there less than a year, it is, it is not okay to say some things, it's better okay to say other things. Let's discuss two parts or two ways to answer this question. First one, let's say you work last for a year and a half. If you did that, it's much, you're gonna be much better off saying that you did have a contract. You did not work full time, you did have a contract. Because if you'll say you did work full time, definitely something did not work out. If something did not work out, which means you will talk about some negative things such as I didn't like the company, company didn't like me, did not like me, you cannot ever say those things. If you do, in, in, uh, for example, in my eyes, you would sound like, oh, this guy, this guy is a troublemaker or this girl is a troublemaker, I don't want to work with them. Uh, if you will be positive, you'll say, oh yeah, yeah, I, I did work, it was a contract position, so everything was fine. Uh, also, there is a third way to answer this question if you work for a year and a half. It is if you were laid off or if a company, uh, well, not if you were laid off, if the company did shut down or did not have the money to uh, pay you. Because once upon a time, during my first QA position at the, what was it, Cascade Financial, whatever it was, I worked there for four months and then I had to leave the company because they just came and say, hey, we cannot pay you, we have no money. That sucks, right? Uh, so, well, I just left the company as soon as possible and started looking for a new job. And what I did say when I was looking for a new job, I did say that they did not have money to pay me and I gotta pay the rent. And the guy who actually, the manager who was hiring me, he was like, no more questions asked. I feel you, I know it can happen in IT. It doesn't happen often, but it actually happens. So no more questions, I, li I like your response. So that's a third way to answer this question. If you have worked for the company less than a year and a half, if you did work more than a year and a half, by the way, a year and a half is just a mark somewhere, it's like a, Okay, uh, to work less than a year and a half, you, if you work less than a year and a half, you sound suspicious. Uh, if you work more than a year and a half, it sounds like you work there, it's okay, it's fine in IT to work for a year and a half or more because you did spend quite a lot of time, you did a lot of work, and usually it's okay to leave after. Maybe you, you did a lot of work and you wanna just learn new technologies, and that's, that's totally fine. So how do we answer that question if you did work for a company for a year and a half or more? Well, you should definitely talk about it full-time unless there was a couple of contract positions that you just put into one long position, for example, for two contracts for a year and you said you worked there for two years. It's okay to specify if it was a contra contract. If not, it was a full-time, definitely say it was a full-time. Why did you leave? Well, there are multiple options. Uh, option number one, you, you've learned quite a lot, you've helped your company quite a lot, but you're not learning any more technologies, you felt like it, 
you felt like you want to learn more, you were ready to step into next role, but there was no space to grow within a company. So then it's okay. People understand you want to learn. You are an ambitious person and every everyone, I mean, most of us engineers, we want to go into next level, right? You want to become a, a senior a senior engineer or senior QA engineer. You want to become an as that. You want to become a senior developer. You want to become a lead or a manager finally. And if you're going for that role, it is okay to specify that there was no space in a company that you were uh, you were working with. So this this was the most common way to answer a question if you work for the company with a year and a half or more. Uh, the other ways would be to say that well, I I, I took a uh, break for half a year to travel with my with my family, with my wife, or on my own, and I have decided to move forward and find an exposition position. It's also okay. Everyone can have their own reasons. Maybe you had to leave because of health issues. That's also possible. Or if your company did not pay you money and you had to find a new job, that's also fine. So let's move on to the next question, which is why did you choose our company? This is very interesting and a tricky one. Uh, because whenever they ask you this question, they, they're looking for pretty much two ways of answering it. First way is when you want to show them, uh, when you want to show them that you are craving for their company. Usually people don't do that. It's a very rare case when you will be like, oh, it was my dream to work for this company. You guys are so awesome. I want to work for you. I want to be the best. In some cases, it's true. In some cases, we have dreamers that want to work for companies like Google, Tesla, Amazon for this or that reason. No issue, no, qu no questions asked in that case. But in most cases, you want to be honest uh, that most of the companies are companies you work for and you are looking not for a company, you're looking for an interesting people to grow with. That's the best way to answer this question because they will see that you're looking culture, you're looking the company that you can grow with. And this actually is the best, this is the best answer for the startups. If you're gonna be working for an Apple or companies like that, you might have to answer it in a different way because sometimes they will not look for ambitious people who wanna grow, they will just look for a nine to five employee. That also happens. Third one, describe your perfect role, uh, company size, culture, etc., etc., etc. So when they ask you this question, they want to know if you are going to be a good cultural fit for their company. If you have same values, if you're looking for the same things that they do offer. In my case, I always say, hey, I don't necessarily care about the size of the company. I don't necessarily care about a project. I care only about a team because you can work on any project in the world. It might be not even an interesting project for you, but as long as you have a team, you will have fun. You guys will make it interesting for your team. So I'm looking for the culture and for the team. I'm not looking for the size and anything else. What was your responsibilities in all of the roles that you have listed on your resume? When they ask you this question, they are trying to find out if you have put any of the fake things on your resume. Because when you start talking about it, it's very easy to catch you, just like that. I work as an engineering manager. I've hired quite a, I would say a ton of people, interview a ton of people as well. It is very easy to find out if you have anything fake or not. So that's why they ex exactly ask you this question and you need to answer it in a way that you know. Whatever you've done, just make sure you structure it nice. You tell them about responsibilities that you were uh, responsible for at that company, that company and another previous company. Uh, let's not come up with anything fake. Let's make it real. Who did you report in every single role on your resume? They are looking for exactly the same things. They're looking to hear, number one, if you have anything fake on your resume, and number two, they're looking to learn something from you. Possibly, because every company has a different reporting structure. And if you work in a company A, and you had reporting structure ABC, and I worked in a company B, and I had a structure ACB, I'll be like, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. Why don't you tell me more about it? I might be able to learn something useful from it. So don't be afraid, share your real experience. Sixth one, and my favorite, salary expectation, or what are you exactly looking for in terms of finance for your next role? This is my favorite question because a lot of people are underestimating themselves and a lot of people are overestimating themselves. What do you think is the better, overestimate or underestimate? Please let me know in the comments. But I personally do think it is much better to overestimate yourself. Regardless of what we're talking about, if we're talking about looking for a girlfriend or a boyfriend, or if we're talking about a salary, you should always overestimate yourself because you are setting much higher expectations right out of blue. 
regardless of the sphere. You should always do that because if you're looking for a job as the QA engineer and you are currently making 100K, you might ask for 105 if you're shy. You might ask for 130 if you're not shy and say, hey, you know what? Uh, currently I'm making 100, but I'm looking for 130 uh, as my next move. Even if they cannot give you 130, they will say, okay, well, it's a little bit stretch for us, but we can probably give you 120. But also if you're a perfect fit, maybe we'll be able to pull out 130. And you know what? You have just negotiated $10,000 within five seconds. You should go for it. People who underestimate themselves, they're always saying that, hey, I make uh, this money, but I'm looking just for a little bit more if possible. Never do that. You're underestimating yourself. People will think that you don't know much because you don't ask for much money. And also, if you're making 70K, but you should, you don't want to, you don't want to tell them that. They don't necessarily have to know that. They cannot legally verify. They cannot call, call to your company and say, hey, how much was this guy making? That's illegal to share. Anyways, uh, if you're making 70, check out the average on a market. I'm pretty sure you're going to find out it's about 100K for the QA engineer. Go ahead during the interview, say, hey, currently I'm making 100,000 as the base salary and I'm looking for 120 or 130. Don't be afraid. Give it a shot. I did it myself. It worked out quite amazingly, as you can see right now. And the last one, any offers you are expecting right now? Are you active? Uh, are you, how active are you in interviewing? When they do ask you th this question, thing number one they are looking for. They're looking for to find out if you are in a rush. Number two, if you are in demand, if people are trying to hire you, if you're an amazing resource. So regardless of the situation, you can go two ways. Way number one, you can say, well, I've just started looking, uh, but you're giving them flexibility with the interviewing process. If you feel like you're available, uh, valuable, or you feel, or you want to make them feel like you are a valuable resource, say, that, yeah, I'm going through a couple of interviews. I'm almost at the last round right now. So then they will rush their asses. They will, they will try to do their best to get you interviewed as soon as possible. Because sounds like you're a valuable resource. Sounds like other companies want you, just like a good looking girl. You know, everyone wants you. You're like, you know what? You better rush your ass because I'm gonna, I'm gonna find someone else. So try to go that way, even if you're not valuing yourself quite a lot. Alrighty guys, how did you like it? Please let me know in the comments below. I would like to hear your feedback and uh, tell me what else would you like to hear. We have quite a lot of questions. I'll be sharing them on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, but I want to hear your feedback. Anyways, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to give me a big fat thumb up. Hit the subscribe button below. Join our Instagram and a Telegram communities. Don't forget that January 30th, we're starting our next group for the QA Automation Engineer. You can also take a QA Manual QA Engineer course if you'd like to. Regardless Regardless, it starts on January 30th. You can reserve a spot also by following the links right there. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you next time.